What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape for Choose Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we had a rather contentious uh, AV game decision as Clover tried to seduce us into picking Betray. However, we stood, stood firm and, well, chose Ally. However, I'm curious to see, as I'm sure you are, how everybody else voted. So, without further ado, let's hop into it. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Alice and Kay, and then Quark. Okay, they both ally. Ooh, what? Wow, so this is a really interesting set of results, right? So at first glance, nobody's at nine, which is great news, but Alice and Kay decide to ally with Quark, um, which is probably pretty similar to the rationale that we chose ally, right? Um, Alice, in her position, would not want to choose Betray and give K nine points, even if they know that Quark is a guaranteed ally. So in this case, they probably settled on ally, K accepting the two points for, you know, being a very positive move overall, regardless. And then, um, you know, K just kind of accepting it, Alice as well. Phi and Luna and Dio betraying each other. So we know that Luna basically left the decision up to Phi, right? Uh, Luna said that she trusts Phi to make the correct choice. In this setting, Dio chose Betray, which is not surprising, right? Dio was at six points and was going to try to take advantage of Phi and Luna, was willing to betray them to get to nine points, even if it meant the death of both of them, interestingly enough. And so Phi actually correctly chooses Betray here on behalf of Luna and saves both of them from death which is pretty incredible. And then looking at us, of course, we chose ally and Temyoji chose ally as well, which is great. I love building that Temyoji trust and hopefully that leads us somewhere going forward. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. And the aftermath. Looks like you managed to trust me. Well, it seems like I made the right choice. Only did what I said I would. Now here's the real question. Is Sigma gonna throw Clover under the bus? You really helped me out. Thanks. I could say the same thing. No need for thanks. The corner of his mouth twitched into a grin. I felt myself smile a little in response. Clover, on the other hand, looked less than pleased. That was a bad choice, Sigma. <laughs> Clover's getting the hatchet ready. That was a bad choice, Sigma. <laughs> and after I told you I'd listen to anything you said. Ah well, whatever. She sighed heavily, shot me one last annoyed look, and stalked off. Across the room, Dio and Phi were already confronting one another over their own results. You tried to kill me and Luna. Can't say I'm surprised. Oh, don't give me that. You knew exactly what I was doing. I knew you weren't stupid enough to pick Ally. You defend yourself with Betray, just like I would. Wait. Where's Luna? In the infirmary, looking after Quark. Is that where Alice went to? Alice? No, she went into one of the AB rooms with Kay. Where has Alice gone? Has she found... The, the handkerchief with the knife on the side of the AB rooms, or has she gone crazy and is, you know, running around? Yes, we did indeed enter together. When the doors opened, however, she left, somewhat unsteadily in the direction of the cyan door. She left the warehouse? Indeed. 
Without even checking the results? Correct. There was little reason to check them. Yeah, it's not like Gork was going to betray you. But yeah, where did she run off to? Indeed. And you two still chose Ally? Man. What a pair of bleeding hearts. If you say so. Being mocked for my compassion is a small price to pay for retaining my humanity. Oof. K dropping real truths out here. Do you hear that, Clover? <laughs> you hear that? Where did Alice run off to? While we were in the AB room, she mentioned being quite tired. Perhaps she went to one of the cabins to rest? Oh, well, I guess that would make sense. An ominous rumble filled the warehouse. An ominous rumble? The Ambidex gates have closed. Round 3 of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. Alright. Yeah, we know that. We can open the gates as many times as we want. Can I skip? No, I can't. Hmm. That means the star keys can be used to play the AB game any number of times. If I understood that announcement correctly, that is. Hey, didn't Zero Jr. say something about this? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The parent solo assignments hop around a bit too. Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all our colors and groups are this time. Within moments, a series of wrists were extended for me to examine. Okay. So a cyan pear, magenta pear, we're a yellow pear, or that was Tamioji, right? K is a red solo, this is a green solo, three or blue solo, huh? It looks like all the colors are weird. Clover's a cyan pear and Phi is a magenta pear, but Tamioji is a yellow pear. The three solos are red, green, and blue. K is red, Dio's green, and you're blue. Then how are we supposed to group up for the chromatic doors? I think they're going to be white this time. Ah yes, Dio told me about them. Very interesting. Yeah. They're white, all of them. I had a good look while I was waiting for Sigma to show up down in the warehouse. You should have seen them then, too, Fi. Yeah, I did. You're talking about the doors in the Floor B warehouse, right? Yeah, so, lay it on us. How are the groups going to shake out this time? Well, there's really only one option this time around, right? Fi nodded and began to explain. Option A, Temyoji and me would form one group. Phi and Dio would form another group. Clover and K would form the third. Huh? Huh? Wait, you mean there's only one option? Yeah. Yeah, there's no other way we can group up to make white. Uh, 
Alice, Luna, and Quark aren't here to show us their bracelets, so we don't know for sure what their colors are. But it's pretty clear they'll all be pairs, since none of the pairs have here have a partner. So they'll be yellow, magenta, and cyan, right? Right. Alright, what now? Yeah, Dio's like, I got, I got stuff to do, so what do we gotta do now? We got plenty of time until those white doors open. Yeah, about an hour it looks like. I'm gonna go find Alice. Of course. I'll come with you then. Yeah, can't let anybody really be alone in this game, right? Clover gave her a shrug and the two of them headed out through the cyan door. Do I really need to say it? The infirmary, right? Forgive the pause, there's like a train. <laughs> it's what, like... It's like 3 in the morning, there's a train going by? Alright. I'm on night shifts again, so... This is my this is my recording time, but did not expect a train to be going by. Anyways, uh, you're going to go check on Quark. Yeah. He gave me a nod and trotted out through the yellow door. That left only three of us, Dio, Kay, and myself. What are you guys going to do? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to head over to the lounge and have a drink. You want to tag along, Kay? Are you making fun of me? I find it rather hard to drink with this mask on. Oh, right, uh, of course, my bad. Well, I'm out. Later. With a lazy wave of his hand, Dio slouched off toward the magenta door. Obviously, we know he's up to no good, right? <laughs> Whatever he's doing, this is his alibi, and he's, he's off with some other mission in mind, I'm sure. It took me a moment to realize Kay was following him. Hey, what is this? You following me? No, you must be mistaken. I hope to investigate Floor B further. There are still several rooms I haven't visited. Okay, okay, you don't have to tell me your life story. You asked him, Dio. See ya. Their conversation ended as they reached the door and stepped through it. Alright. What should I do? Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? Of course. I need to get the rest of that story out of Temyoji. The words were scarcely out of my mouth before I set off at a dead run down the hallway and toward the infirmary. Huh? There's nobody here. The room was completely empty. Uh-oh. This is... odd. I edged forward and peeked around the partition. Oh boy, what are we gonna find? There he was. Temyoji. He was standing next to Quark, apparently oblivious to my presence, looking down at something in his hand. A uh, picture? I must have made some small noise because he suddenly looked up, saw me, and hastily shoved the photo back into his pocket. What was that? It was a photo of something, right? Was it yours? Forget it. It's got nothing to do with you. But all the stuff we had with us when we got grabbed was taken away. Why were you hiding it? Why should I tell all of you about one measly photo? So the question is, right, was it in a safe that he got access to earlier, or was he actually allowed to keep it when he was abducted by Zero? Or was he not even abducted by Zero in the first place? 
Um, anyway, where's Luna? I asked her to leave. I wanted to be alone with Quark for a bit. So, why are you here? I wanted to hear the rest. The rest of what? What are you talking about? I'm talking about that simulated manned mission to Mars. We heard that recording about it. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I'm getting old. Memory's not what it used to be. I seem to be forgetting a lot of stuff lately. Hey, nice try, pal, but you're not getting away with it this time. You remember something, all right? You remember so much you told me it'd take away more than ten minutes to tell it all. You really sure you want to know? Huh? Maybe I'll tell you and then you'll regret it. Maybe you'll wish you'd kept your full mouth shut. Just think about all the hopes you've got for the future, and all the happy memories of your past. What if what I have to tell you makes everything you've ever believed ring hollow, and the whole world just crumbles around you? You sure you want that? Hey, come on, you, you don't need to threaten me. This isn't a threat. I'm being honest here. Are you really, truly prepared? Well, of course. I never got the chance to say I am. Uh-oh. Before I could, Fi exploded into the room, her face a mixture of anxiety and fear. I'm sure it's Alice. Good. There you are. D did something happen? Alice. Alice's. Look, just come with me, all right? She's in the number two cabin. Without waiting for a response, Fi spun around and ran back out of the room. Temyo and I exchanged a quick, confused look, then leapt up and took off after her. Wow. Alice. So she's dead in this timeline too. Notably, it looks like the scalpel this time around, right? So in some timelines, it's the knife, making it likely that Dio killed her. Whereas in this one, it's the scalpel, meaning she likely killed herself. And what's kind of interesting is I, I get the impression, or if I had to guess, the best ending in this game is the one where everyone survives. Which makes me think that that first timeline where we were able to find the information, um about where Alice went, where she ran off to, and then go back in time and figure that out again. And I think the lock was basically we needed two doses of the Accelivir in order to heal both Alice and Quark. Uh, that timeline is probably our best timeline where everyone has the opportunity to be saved slash nobody's dead yet, right? Whereas it seems like in almost every timeline, aside from that, Alice ends up dead pretty quickly. The first thing I saw when I stepped through the door was the blossom of red on her chest. It felt as if I'd walked straight into a brick wall. I stopped short, my body refusing to move. No. Why did this happen? I forced one shaking foot forward, then the next. My legs began to buckle, and I put a hand against the wall to steady myself as my heart thundered in my chest. Calm down. Calm down. This looks pretty bad, but you don't actually know anything yet. Yeah, that's right. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we can still save her. Then, at last, I pressed my fingers to her neck, and those hopes were dashed. No pulse. Clearly she wasn't breathing either. Her pupils had dilated hideously, making her face seem somehow inhuman. Her pupils had dilated... Hideously. I don't think that's like a clue that we're actually supposed to use about what caused her death, right? Clearly she was stabbed by the scalpel, but um, I mean there's some medications that can dilate your pupils, right? And one of those, hmm, 
I think that that medication that we found Dio hiding that one time, the the neostigmine, I think that might actually do that, but I'm not 100%. So, I, but regardless, I don't think that's something they would rely on the player knowing. No. No, it's not true. Why? Then I noticed it. All the blood must have distracted me, but now I saw that there was a scalpel buried in her chest. Judging by the position of its handle, she had been stabbed through the heart. I felt a sympathetic twinge of pain in my own chest, and my stomach lurched. Bile and hopelessness rose up in my throat. I stood, hands balled tightly into white-knuckled fists, and took a deep breath. I will say, some of the game's best writing, in my opinion, is when Sigma actually finds dead characters, describing the body describing his own feelings, his reactions, uh, is in my opinion some of the almost like most poetic writing this game has to offer. All around the room were the rest of the Notary Games participants, except of course for Quark. I wanted to ask which one of them had killed her. Even if it had been one of them though, there was no way they'd answer. All I could do was stare at each one of them in turn, asking myself, is this person a murderer? The looks they traded with one another suggested that I wasn't the only person wondering if they were standing next to a killer. An unsettling silence filled the room. Clover was the first to speak. Who? Who did this? I guess at the moment... K... Dio and Luna are the only unaccounted for individuals, right? We were with Temyoji and Quark in the infirmary. Clover was with Phi looking for Alice. Alice was dead. And Dio and Kay split separately. And Luna had already been asked to leave the infirmary. So those three are the most suspicious at the moment. Obviously, there's the chance that Alice killed herself, too. Say something. Answer me. P please, Clover, calm down. We don't even know if she was killed. Then what happened? An accident? You think a scalpel just dropped from the ceiling and stabbed her? Cool it, kid. You did it, didn't you? Are you nuts? Then who did it? Who killed her? Clover, even if we assume that she was murdered, that doesn't necessarily mean the killer was one of us, does it? Wait a minute, you went into the AB room with Alice during the last round, didn't you? Something happened in there, didn't it? No. Nothing happened. Don't lie to me. There's no way Alice would just run off like that. She wouldn't leave me. Something happened. Okay, there's actually some good thought here. Why would Alice run off so immediately? What was she running to? It sounds like she was infected, infected with Radical Six and was kind of going crazy. But at the same time, she might have realized something, and somebody might have, well, realized that she realized something, and killed her. If she was going to leave, she'd tell me. You know what, though? Didn't Clover hang on to the scalpel? I do remember that standing out about this timeline. In the timeline where she killed herself, she had grabbed the scalpel herself. In the other timelines... I don't remember exactly what happens with the scalpel, but but I remember that in this one, Clover was handed the scalpel. So the question is, did she hang on to it? Did she set it somewhere else where it could have been accessed by somebody? She, she, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's likely that Clover would have killed Alice. Like I really don't. But at the moment, that's fairly compelling. Nah, Hey, Clover. Clover, 
Don't you think just assuming Alice was murdered is jumping the gun a little bit? How can you look at her and say that? Scalpels don't just stab people all by themselves. Oh, I see. I see. I get it now. You're all in on it, aren't you? It wasn't just one killer, it was six. No wonder you're so anxious to say this wasn't a murder. Clover, please, just settle down. Uh-oh. Looks like Clover's cracking, guys. Hmm. Fine. Show me some proof, then. Prove to me in ten seconds that you didn't murder my friend. Or I'm going to kill every last one of you Bakas. There's, there's, first of all, no way she could. Granted, we know she's quite capable from previous, you know, Nonori games. But, uh, but with K around, I don't think it's gonna happen. Tenyoji? Quite strong. She would need some good weapon. Sigma? Big bulky boy. Not, not super likely. Phi and her jumping capability? Yeah, I don't know. You make a threat like, I'm gonna kill every one of you, when, well, there are six very capable individuals surrounding you. I don't think that's gonna go over very well. You're all going to die just like she did. Hey, hold on a minute. Nine, eight, seven. Clover. Six, five, four. Clover. Three, two, one. What? What? To be continued? Are you kidding me? This is one of the ones that easily caught me most by surprise. To be continued? Excuse me? What's up with that? So this is locked? Do we... What? That's such an early lock. I guess it feels like it compared to some of the other timelines we've been doing. But what? We have to prove to her in 10 seconds that we didn't kill Alice. I think that's the information we're lacking. Or rather, we need to be able to show that somebody else did kill Alice in this timeline. Wow, I'm I'm really curious. That timeline has me super intrigued now. Especially because I'm fairly confident that Clover had the scalpel. So I guess what we'll do is go back and see what happens if we click betray. That's probably going to lead us to a game over if I had to guess. But might as well explore that option while it's relatively fresh in our heads. Huh. I was wondering, you know, would some sort of, like, major brawl break out when Clover, I don't know, pulls out the scalpel, or, no, that's right, she shouldn't have the scalpel. Alright, we'll choose Betray. Team Horn Dog, Sigma here. See what happens with this. Can't imagine it's gonna go over very well with Temyoji. The real question is, will the game, you know... Give us now both betray results. So let's take a look at these results. I doubt, but it's possible everybody else changes. Oh, look at that Alice photo. I feel like I didn't even notice that last time around. So ally, ally, betray, 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 ally. Yikes. So this is the Clover gets nine points, screws everybody over, and we upset break Tenyoji's trust. Timeline. But the other stuff hasn't changed. No. 
So, that's how it is, huh? Promises are made to be broken, I see. Sorry. I just couldn't bring myself to trust you. I could have chosen betray and killed you. That was a possibility. Yeah. After all, you did choose betray in the last round. That was a completely different situation. Well, in any event, your idiotic paranoia has given Clover 9 BP. How do you intend to deal with that? Don't worry. She never tried open the... Really? Then what's that? <laughs> huh? Look. I believe she's standing in front of the number 9 door right now. Well, what the heck? No. No way. Yeah, no, no surprise here, right? The real question, or what's, I guess, pretty surprising here is she's leaving Alice behind. Oh, the number nine door. She opened it. Crap. Clover! What the heck are you doing? Sorry. Alice gave me an order, though. Clover, you have to get out of here and call for help. My BP is down to one. I'll have to play the AB game at least three more times in order to get to nine. If someone beats me to it, then we'll be trapped here forever. Oh, so this must be the private conversation they had in the infirmary. That can't happen. I am giving you an order as your commanding officer. Interesting. So whatever organization they belong to, Alice is Clover's commanding officer. Escape. What about the promise you made me? Promise? You said you'd listen to anything I said. And she's gonna be like, promises are made to be broken, right, Sigma? So, I am, aren't I? I can sure hear you well enough. Every little word is reaching my ears, isn't it? You... What, were you thinking of something gross? You're a perv. Hey, come on now. She got him. She got him. And now everybody else is dead. The number nine door has been opened. It will remain open for nine seconds. Anyway, I did what I promised, so I'll be heading off now. Clover! Clover! <laughs> you baka! You're not getting out of here! Yeah, I was gonna say, there are a lot of people that are gonna try to stop her. Dio leapt toward Clover with a roar, but she danced quickly aside, dodging his punch with ease. What about Kay, though? Bye, guys! I always, like, give Kay so much more credit, right? He's got that suit. He's shown how potent his strength can be in other timelines. But it seems like when people are about to walk through the number 9 door, he's suddenly impotent. With a last carefree grin, she leapt through the number 9 door. And there she goes. The number nine door has closed. This ends the nonary game. Thank you for your participation. As the game is over, all doors other than the number nine door have been unlocked. Escape is not possible. Please enjoy your stay. She's gone. Crap. All we can do now is wait for her to call for help. 
Help, huh? Let's hope there's still one, still someone who can. Interesting, right? So this is Temyoji letting on that he knows the uh, the outside world's in a rather dire state. What's that supposed to mean? Temyoji said nothing, just shuffled off through the yellow door and out of the room. A cold silence descended on the rest of us. It was a silence that promised to remain for a very, very long time. And that's probably the end. Yeah, so, solid game over. Now, let's take a look at our flowchart, right? Because something jumps out to me when I was just thinking about the flowchart. So when we take a look at this, we got a game over, and it seems like for each of these branches, for every character, there's a game over where they go through the door, and then some sort of an ending probably where we look at their backstory. What I was curious about is, okay, so there's still a fair number of timelines, I guess, but we really only have these two main branches in the middle route. And whatever info we get there is going to have to do a lot of unlocking, right? We have one, two, three, four, five locks currently. And look at how much of the game we've explored already. And those aren't, you know, unraveled yet. So these last remaining timelines that we're going to explore are probably going to start to really unravel the rest of the game. Where we're going to obviously can do what we can with the timelines. But we're going to get enough information that then we can open up another timeline and that we can follow to completion. That's going to open up another timeline. And so it's finally everything's going to fall into place. And I'm really looking forward to those moments, although it's going to be difficult to keep track of what's going on in all the different timelines. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll do my best and thank you guys for your help along the way. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really like that Clover segment where she's going to potentially kill everyone. And I'm really curious to see what happens afterwards. And the Clover game over as well was pretty interesting. So hope you guys liked it too. But in the next episode, we're going to start back... Where Where is this again? Into the Chromatic Doors for the first time. And we will see what that brings us. But until that episode, this has been Night Zero. And this mission is complete. Wow.